One. So it's finally time. Let's go ahead and put together this pulley system for the G0704 mil. I don't know who made these instructions, but man. I love it. Can't mess this up. So I am doing this on the machine, but really not four socket head cap screws, just three and a screw. Well, this is why we upgrade these things, but I'm probably going to take the head off here and, um, Go put it on the workbench. Um, yeah, this looks fun. Okay, so after saying that, you know, it actually does kind of make sense. You can barely kind of see it in the photo, but this is a recess because where that screw is, instead of being on the four corners, like the instructions are saying, right? That screw is directly over this gear. So you needed the clearance, so that's why you couldn't use a socket head cap screw. Well, makes sense, but why'd they change that? I hope the uh, hole locations don't uh, interfere with the new mounting bracket. So that'll be the first thing that I check. So now since it's off the table and cut the motor lines, because to be honest with you, it's easier just to splice them than it was to try to weed through this rat's nest. Um, the grounding cable is connected directly to the fuse. So unfortunately that's hardwired, soldered. Um, but anyway, back to the screw, you can now see, you know, with the shop light now, you can see how it's this recess for that, you know, gear. So it makes sense on what they did, right? Get this as low as possible using the screw. And then, uh, have these socket head cap screws to remove. So there's the uh, bad boy off the table and all this stuff is gonna get removed and taken out. So, yep, let's keep going. So this has to come off. And unfortunately this is pretty much really on there. So gonna have to grab a mallet and try not to beat up these screws, but let's uh, give it a shot. Well, that actually wasn't as hard as I thought. Uh, just a little bit of leverage underneath here, uh, push down, rotated, push down, and uh, finally this thing kind of just gave loose, so um, looks like we'll be able to just push this up. Okay. All right, so Went ahead and removed the other screw, uh, Delrin, I guess, plastic gear uh, from here, same as I removed off of this, and then took the sensor off, unplugged it, and took the uh, guard off, the one that actually holds the, uh, holds that, uh, you know, that thing, the optical sensor, <laughs> took that off. Uh, as well as the ring and uh yeah so now we just gotta depress this down pull that out and then the shaft will come out and then we have to somehow get into these bearings without a press so i think there was a couple tricks while using the spindle you're able to move it or something of that nature so we'll give that a shot and see what happens all right so spindle just uh comes out you take the uh the locking screw off of it, and once you took that pin and uh, spring off, then you just rotate this bad boy, and the spindle just comes right out. So, there's the spline, which is on the main bearing assembly, so you can kind of see it in here. Oh, let me get that shot. So that's the spline, that's what causes, right, the spindle. You can move the spindle up and down, but it's still uh, engaged with the motor. So, if anyone was wondering how that worked. So, there's a couple ways to do this. What I found easy enough was I have a piece of wood 
uh, from a Harbor Freight bench. Um, and that actually fits snugly in the spline. Uh, so I just grabbed a little hammer here and gave it some, you know, just little taps. And you can see that bearing is uh, the whole internal assembly is just coming straight out. Very light taps, not hammering it. And there it is. So you can see that fit perfectly. Well, the intermediate gears are gone and <laughs> I just, when you get to this part, these things, I mean, you basically have to get these snap rings that are off or inside of here if your machine has them, which the G0704 does. So you got to pull the snap ring off the top. And then underneath, there's another snap ring. And mine was basically grease and paint because it looks like they painted this after they assembled that intermediate gear and lubed it. So I had to scrape paint off the bottom to finally find the snap ring. Once got that under control, the snap ring was wedged. So when they inserted it, they just kind of forced it in there. And once you get that off, then I took a screwdriver, Phillips head, and there is a turning, you know, pin so it, it does have like a, a pinned shaft, right? For when they turned it. And I just stuck that on the screwdriver and I beat the living crap out of it until it finally came through. And then once it got about into here, the bearing races. So the intermediate gear has another plate on it. So I had to adjust that to line it up so everything sat flush and then proceeded to beat the crap out of it even more. So if you have to replace the intermediate gears on your G0704, uh, good luck. I wouldn't do it. I would just upgrade at that point because to be honest with you, I don't, I don't think that shaft's ever going back into this thing. Nope. I'm leaving the knob for nostalgia. Whew. All right. Now we can worry about putting in the new shaft. I think that was it. And the first issue. Um, apparently the head is not drilled all the way through. Um, can't feel it drilled all the way through. So these stock M6 screws that you're supposed to reuse are too long. So, either get the angle grinder out here and shorten them or figure out if I'm going to be drilling and tapping a deeper hole. <sighs> Might be tomorrow Nathan's problem. But, that's not going to work. All right, so I grabbed the calipers, right? And I took a dimension from the hole and it actually does look like this was intended um, to be the right length. It just, they did not thread the hole all the way down. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab my tap set and see if I can't just finish threading this hole down. Um, and it looks like the washer should be able to um, hold it just before it bottoms out. So I'll try to run a tap through it, see if that works first before uh, we start getting fancy with how we want to either cut this or uh, we're trying to tap that even further. But let me just try to grab the tap, run the tap down, see if I can't get the depth. So that's exactly what it was. The hole wasn't tapped all the way down so all I did was grab a little tap wrench um, run it down 
Um, yeah, and that worked. So if you have the same issue that I have, just uh, go ahead and get a new tap and just clean up those holes and drive it all the way down as far as you can without breaking your tap. So it is blind tapping at that point, so it's kind of scary, but it almost feels like because the screws were not, you know, fully engaged with it, that's what happened. So you can see the tap handle. I mean, the tap's gone all the way down past the threads. And you line it up with the bolt, and uh, it's the right depth. So, yep. So if you have the same issue I have and getting refusal too early, just rerun a tap and uh, it'll work. Well, I kept trucking along and put the spindle in, pressed the bearing on my trusty, rusty bench vise. Uh, slowly but surely, it seated itself. It is a very tight fit for the main bearing on the uh, spline shaft uh, down there. So that's that lower bearing. Um, put the motor on the wrong direction. <laughs> so have to flip that around. But all in all, I think we made progress. So just got to get the spindle back in there, throw it on the machine, and check for uh, runout. Let's uh, hope to God that the, uh, the runout's not terrible. <laughs> All right, so it's the next morning and went ahead and flipped the motor and installed the belts. Everything looks like it's up to functional par again. Um, did have a little issue with the, uh, with the RPM meter. Uh, I put it too close to the shaft and it was uh, not reading properly and then marked it up, but just plastic but 1400 rpm this was about how fast the machine would go before that right about 2200 rpm Sounds very nice, not too loud. All in all, I would say this is a success.